How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? Doing well. Doing well. Doing well. How is our Dubai World Cup winning trainer? Ah, <laughs> the thoughts of winning that race uh, uh, brighten my day always. <laughs> the fact that you could travel and win in that year was spectacular. I know. I mean, it was definitely a different experience with very few people there and, um, you know, everything the way it played out. Uh, I was a little worried about, you know, if things were going to be able to continue, but uh, yeah. it went off without a hitch. So it went well. It went well. And hopefully this year we can talk about bringing Proxy back to Dubai and winning another one, taking one more home. I would love that. That would be a wonderful thing. <laughs> And that's why particularly I wanted to interview you because I said, yeah. look, even if there's a possibility, it's, it's, you, you're not going to turn up with, uh, you know, uh, uh, a horse that, you know, won't do it. And after his Pegasus run, um, this is a horse that needs to come back strong. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, he, he never really got a good chance uh, coming out of the one hole in the Pegasus on a on a kind of a speed biased uh, racetrack where yeah. he was shuffled back from the, all the kickback and then yeah. only got to really run the last three sixteenths of a mile yeah. when, when he got clear. So, yeah, no, we we just drew a line through that. And um, actually, the mile and a quarter uh, of the World Cup would be very beneficial to Proxy. So. Yeah, absolutely, and I think in the last the 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 little the the mile and a quarter the the distance that he came out in front uh, in the Pegasus, he did really well. He was he yeah. he caught up very quickly. Yeah, he was the only horse that was really making up any good ground yeah. um, on the leader at the end. No, it's it's. It would have been fantastic to see him uh, at least get to top three. Yeah. Another sure. day. Another day. Um, now, yeah. what are your plans? Uh, you know, yes, it's a potential, a possible uh, right now. But what are your plans for proxy over the next couple of months? Is there a prep race that you're looking at? What are you looking at doing? Well, you know, the probably not necessarily a prep race but mm -hmm. more than likely if we don't come to dubai we would mm -hmm. be looking at races like possibly the santa anita handicap yep. or the new orleans Cl uh, classic uh, mm -hmm. that runs here where we're stabled at the fairgrounds so those are those are alternative races that we would potentially use instead of the world cup right um and that's that's in constant discussion with, uh, uh, you know, Michael Banahan and Dan Pride mm. uh, with Godolphin. We mm. we we have a, a conference call every Tuesday. We discuss, you know, our plans. And right now, those are the races that are in, under consideration. consideration. And what if you were to travel him to Dubai, what are the kind of dates that you would look at? Well, I mean, with Mystic Guide, we came up out a little over a week ahead of time yeah yep. um actually it was closer to two weeks mm -hmm. so we we would probably Do you know something. look at similar uh right. arrangements where we could get an easy work into him like we did yep. with mystic guide going into yep. the race yep uh, um so yeah that would be that would be the plan if we were to go yep. yeah yeah so you know and, and a lot a lot will have to do with how the uh, the Saudi Cup uh, yep. goes, mm -hmm. uh, with Baffert's two horses running there, how yep. they run, um, what his plans are with those horses will yeah. play a part, you know, and that's a month a month before a month the uh, the World Cup. Yeah, don't you feel that the Saudi Cup would be a little different because of the the surface? being slightly different to the Dubai surface in terms of the dirt? Well, I mean, I think so. They're both, they're both dirt tracks. Yeah. So, you know, it just Not depends that. on how horses handle each surface. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but remember uh, the Baffert horses are both, you know, 
very well established grade yeah. one winners yeah. as yeah. proxy is a yeah. grade one winner. But uh, you know, Taiba is considered one of the better American uh, horses sure. uh, in the country right now. True, true, absolutely. That's 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 very true. Um, what are your now? You've you you have uh, you know you are a Dubai World Cup winning trainer. What have been? I mean, if we set the Dubai World Cup aside that night, I'm sure is spectacular in itself. But what's what are other racing highlights in your career that you would say? Look, th these were big for me. Well, um, certainly all my grade one wins that I've had, and I've had five of them now, mm. um, have been special moments uh, for me. Um, yeah. But uh, you know, winning the uh, winning the training title at the fairgrounds was yeah. uh, you know huge. Uh, it was this is a track that I've raced at going uh, getting close to thirty years now. I've been racing yeah. at the fairgrounds, yeah. and when I won the title here at the fairgrounds, it just meant so much for yeah. not only myself but for my staff. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of those people have been with me for you know, 25, 30 years. Wow. And um, so it, it was a big thing for us to be able to win at home and, mm. and, and win the title. So that was, that was definitely one of the, one of the big moments for me. And, and then, uh, you know, all my, my grade one wins have been obviously very special. Sure. So. Absolutely. And here's to loads and loads more of grade one wins over the next yeah. 10 years. Yeah, um, for sure. Now, how did you get into horse racing? Where did you, where, where were you born? Where did you grow up? And how did you get into horse racing? So I got into horse racing because my father was a jockey. And okay. so when I, when I was born, he was riding mm -hmm. um, on the East Coast of the United States. And um, uh, I was born in New Jersey. Uh, yeah. My mother was from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And so my dad was riding on the East coast at that time. So that's where I was born. But then I grew up in Miami, in Miami Springs. Oh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, that's a big change. That's a nice change. Yeah. Nice change because, you know, beautiful, you know, weather, warm weather by the yeah. water. And I, I had a great childhood and where my childhood home was, was only mm -hmm. three miles from Hialeah racetrack, which, Back in the 70s, uh, you know, I was born in 1957, so I was a teenager in the 70s, right. and that was uh, highly a racetrack at the time, was one of the right. premier tracks mm -hmm. where the winter racing was the best in right. the country at that time. So it was a great childhood to be able to grow up, you know, around a racetrack where the top horses were running, top trainers, yeah. top jockeys. My father was good friends and actually worked with one of the premier jockeys in, in the United States, yeah. uh, Bill Hartack. And Bill mm -hmm. Hartack won five Kentucky Derbies. And, and back in the 60s and 70s, he was, you know, on the cover of Time magazine and wow. Sports Illustrated. And so I grew up around him. Yeah. So... Uh, those kind of things were the things that really got me uh, interested in wanting to, I was never small enough to think about yeah. being a jockey, but, you know, being a trainer was, you know, something that I always dreamed okay. about doing. My father warned me that, you know, it was very difficult and only the, maybe the top 10% of the trainers were the ones that became the, you know, uh, elite type trainers yeah. and he said if you if you fall into the lower category it's tough to make a living it's a tough yeah. business and he warned yeah. me you know be careful you know yeah. getting into that yeah and you know everything he told me was right because you know in the beginning of my career after the first 10 years I did I did I, I started my career in California I, I mm -hmm. went I moved out to California and things went really well for a few years, but then I saw this part that my dad was talking about where I got, yeah. I lost some horses, I lost some clients and things yeah. weren't going that well. 
And I, I, at that point, I said to myself, this is what my dad was talking about. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm in trouble, you know, yeah. I have to do something to reinvent myself. And so mm -hmm. I, I left California, came to the Midwest, which was the New Orleans, uh, Kentucky and Chicago circuit, Arlington mm -hmm. Park at the time, mm -hmm. and just got things going and, and just slowly uh, was able to get my business, you know, going. I was winning at a good percentage and people started sending me better and better horses. Okay. And it's, it just evolved into eventually, uh, you know, getting to train for Godolphin. And How did that happen? How did well, that happen? Did you get a call that, saying to you well, on that, Sheikh Mohammed that was, <laughs> that was something that that happened over a, a, a long period of time because one of okay. the most important people in my career was a man named John Adger. Mm -hmm. And John Adger uh, managed uh, the horses for uh, Bob and Janice McNair, which was Stonerside Stable. Yeah. And because of John, who I knew from my early days in, in training in Texas, mm -hmm. John started sending me horses for Bob and Janice McNair of Stonerside. And right. then eventually Sheikh Mohammed uh, bought all the Stonerside oh. horses, yep. Yep. all the farms, everything from Stonerside. And I was already a trainer for Stonerside. So right. I, I got grandfathered in. <laughs> yeah. Uh, into Godolphin because of my uh, association with Stonerside and John Adger. Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then John actually stayed on with, uh, with Godolphin for a little while advising them and, and helping them along with yeah. these uh, Stonerside mares and, and racehorses. Mm -hmm. And uh, John, you know, had, kept putting my name in there yeah. uh, to hopefully allow me to continue training for Godolphin. So yeah. I got lucky. I won a, a, a grade two stake uh, on Kentucky Derby day, not wow. the Kentucky Derby, but I won a stake with a filly named Tiz Aquina mm -hmm. for at the time was Darley. And um, from there uh, I eventually got that phone call from Dan pride uh, and Jimmy bell at the time. Uh, asking if I would uh, take a, uh, you know, start training a yeah. string for Godolphin. And it was like, you know. Christmas it, came it, early. Yeah, it was beautiful. <laughs> I mean, it, it was a dream come true. It, it's something that any trainer would uh, do, you know, just about anything to have the opportunity because it's an amazing opportunity to get the horses. Yeah. Not, only, not only the horses that I get, but just to work for, uh, such a great operation yeah. that, uh, you know, always puts the horses first yeah. and yeah. allows the trainers to do their job and very rarely ever second guesses the trainers. And yeah. it, it's just, uh, it's just a wonderful opportunity. So True. I've, True. I've been very lucky in that respect. Um, Godolphin is really well respected because of that. They, 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 they treat their horses and their trainers and even their jockeys really well. Yes. Um, you, it, you... It's true. I, I can tell you that from experience. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> and now how long have you been with uh, Godolphin? How long have you how, has the um, relationship Eight years gone now. Up? Eight wow. years now. Yeah. Yeah. Eight years and, and one Dubai World Cup. Yeah. And hopefully <laughs> uh, some more to come. Uh, Another one, another one, almost, almost at that corner. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I would love to uh, hopefully have a chance to to run a horse in the Derby for Godolphin someday. Hopefully, in the Kentucky Derby, it yeah, would be beautiful. That would be the the. I guess the the. I was going to ask you what's what's the race that you would really like to win and uh, Kentucky Derby. Well, Kentucky Derby, and I would I would love to someday win a breeders cup race i've run in the breeders cup and 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 placed in the breeders cup but i haven't had a winner in it so yeah. that would be another goal to try to reach uh you know winning a breeders cup race and uh and and hopefully maybe the kentucky derby and don't forget to uh, and don't forget the saudi cup oh that's true that's true <laughs> don't forget the saudi cup because you know it's something else 
for a Dubai a, fam, a Dubai family to take home, uh, a, a, you know, a cup in a, 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 such a prestigious cup uh, from the region. Right. No, I'm I'm sure that is, and that would also be a, a an amazing uh, dream come true to win that race too. Yeah. Now you've got to start hanging these somewhere. Kentucky Derby, yeah. uh, Breeders' <laughs> Cup, Dubai World Cup, or a few Dubai World Cups, and then the Saudi Cup. <laughs> there you go. For sure. I would love that. Well, it was an absolute pleasure talking to you. I really appreciate your time. Thank you for doing this on such short notice. We wanted to get you in there in the first souvenir. And so I, I pushed it, pushed it, pushed it. So I really appreciate it. Wow. Thank you so much for thinking of me. And I'm always, uh, you know, honored to uh, to to be in your magazine. And I really appreciate it. No, thank you very, very much, sir. I, I have one request. If you have photographs of yourself with Proxy and any photos you've got of Proxy, if you could send us, um, okay. I'd appreciate it. We've got lots of photos of you with the Dubai World Cup itself. Uh, right. So we've saved those, right. hung on to those. But if there are okay. more um, newer ones of Proxy and with Proxy, we'd really appreciate it. Okay, I will do that. Thank you, you so much. Thank okay, you. Thank Have a you. good evening. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye now.